A memory card to save. All right, ready? Three, two, one, and go. All right, so this is Quest 64. First and thing you'll see him do after this menu is going to turn the message speed, text speed maxed up. Yep. So the JP version is actually was released after <laughs> after the US version. Hi, all those people that are asking for us to notice you. Oh, I just missed the door. <laughs> I'm good at this game, I swear. Um, so the US version is actually was released first before the JP version. So the US version has a lot of issues. The JP version they fist are fixed. They fist. Um, so a lot of things that they change is like what chests are. Normally I wouldn't grab these chests, but these two chests in here are actually two, um, let's see, fresh, yeah, fresh breads, which heal you for 50. In the US version, actually both of these are dewdrops. Yeah, I didn't know that until I booked, I booked the other day. I assumed that they were the same, because there's, there's a lot of stuff they changed, but I just thought those were the same. Basically, at the beginning of it, we get to 77 experience and pick up all the spirits along the way. But we're putting all those spirits in the water first uh, so that we can do the cloning glitch, which comes up immediately after solving. So that guy actually gives you a. Uh, I think he gives you. He gives you an. Uh, let's say he gives you mint leaves. Yeah, he gives you mint leaves, I think. And uh, that chest is another fresh bread. So we have three fresh breads. I think? Yeah, he gives you mint leaves. I'm digging my rainbow mustache. Yeah. I love it. No. Uh, yeah, I hope, hopefully I'll have a perfect solve ring and uh, everyone will be like, oh, this game's really easy, but more than likely I'm probably gonna die even with all the extra safety precautions I'm going to take. Because solve ring is the first true troll that you come across. Apparently Apollo 13. <laughs> sure thing, chat. Sure thing. Maybe you just spam something interesting. Stop being shitters. <laughs> Yo, bread the salt ring. If only. Bread the salt ring. <laughs> if only. If only that was a possibility. True. It'll be missed for days. Oh, what's this game even about? Brian's going to find his long lost dad. Not long lost. Um, the story is that the monastery that I'm from, that Brian is from, he's actually called Jean Jacques in this version of the game. Uh, the monastery holds the Eltail Book, which is an all powerful book with magic. It gets stolen, obviously, and uh, your dad goes out to, to get the book back. After, I think it's like a couple months, something like three or four months. Your dad hasn't come back, so they decide, hey, you're the son of this crazy powerful wizard. You're 10 years old. Go save the world. That's basically pretty the story. That's, that's pretty much the story. Well, that was a lot of quests before, and uh, you come on. Generally just like, uh, primarily all routing for the most part. Yeah. Like, you'll see there, he's great to use the wings to uh, lead the town faster after getting experience. Ah, right, oh, damn it. What I'm trying to do right now is actually the initiative glitch, because I want to get... It, with the initiative glitch, uh, basically you go first, because you still move when you start to cast a spell, and in that time that you're sliding, a battle can start. I have 60 drink right now. A battle can start, um, and if I cast a spell immediately and start moving, for whatever reason, you get a million times more experience in your agility than you normally would. No idea why, but it's a thing that happens. Can you do that into cryptid fights like power? I haven't been able to, so either I'm bad or it's not possible, and I'm certainly bad, so don't know. Alright, so the way the uh, experience for this game works, obviously all the enemies are worth different experience, and whenever you get a certain number of experience, there's different levels, like the first level is at 7, the second level is 18, the third one is 31, you get a, a level up and put that into whatever element. Uh, but for your HP, your MP, your defense, and your agility, it's all about using it or getting hit. So in the case of HP and defense, when you get hit, you actually get, um, 
you get more, you get training in it and you can somewhat level up, so I'll eventually have more HP. But HP can also be trained by meleeing enemies. Uh, MP is trained by casting spells and having them successfully land. Uh, agility is trained by moving, and that's it. Now there's three different spots where agility can be trained differently. There's areas where there are no encounters, like you can't have an encounter, like a town. There's areas where there's uh, where you can get an encounters, but there's not an encounter area. So like out in the overworld, where there's there's certain spots where you don't get encounters, and, and you, even in dungeons. And then there's areas that you can get encounters. And the areas you can get encounters is the most experience you'll get for agility. That's nothing to do with a glitch. That's actually they did that on purpose. Okay. <laughs> right. And I ignore the bunnies because it's not worth any amount of experience I want. Oh, bye chat. Alright. <laughs> Alright, I have six experience. I want to get to about 33, 31, 33 experience before I get into the forest. Uh, just makes it nice and easy. When we get into the forest, I'm going to do a bit of uh, defense training. Normally we would only go to 53, but I would more than likely die to silvering because this game is basically just a big fuck you. Thankfully, I didn't get frozen. I have pretty bad luck against those enemies. They can freeze you, and I tend to get frozen. So I've only gotten a second spell, Water Pillar 2. At 7 water, I'll get the first more important spell, Heal 1. All right, so I'll fight these guys since I'm not getting good fights. Six experience, that'll be it. Uh, 14. That sucks. Lovely. Oh, so people complaining about how this game is terrible. Uh, you're not wrong, you're just assholes. Um, Agreed. Uh, the game is bad, but for a good reason. It's unfinished. It's about 60% complete. There's actually supposed to be three, three playable characters, there's only one. Um, they basically released the game early so they didn't have to compete with Ocarina of Time. And that's the gist of it, hence why it's bad. I, yeah, I now oh, the first character that the secondary character that we first get is actually in this castle, uh, the daughter of the king. She would have been a white mage. We don't see her at all because we don't go into that room. Uh, the, sec the third playable character would have been a pirate, who would have been a melee character, and Brian would have been solely black magic. I'm actually kind of glad it's a single player game or single character game. Oh, I messed up because I I enjoy that more than having to control multiple characters. And it actually might be this game is the reason why. One thing that I think this game actually does well is transition this into like battle and out of battle. Yeah. Minus the fact you don't know where the you know where you're going or anything. Oh of course. But just how it does it. Yeah. And besides the overarching story, uh, every time you go into town that they're gonna say basically the same thing. Oh, some evil person stole our gem, jewel, of whatever element. Go get it back for us. All right, go kill a boss. You get the jewel back. They give it. They you talk to the guy and go. Like, Actually, you hold on to it. And you do that four times, and then basically we're at the end. <laughs> so normally, uh, in any percent, I would use the yellow wings right there. They have about 20 seconds. But because uh, there's two spirits that we can't get until we kill the next two bosses, I'm gonna hold on to those wings, come back here, grab those two spirits, and then move on. Oh, I think I mentioned that already. But uh, the reason we level up water first is because we quick, very quickly want to get to about uh, 19 water for the exit spell. That allows us to do the cloning glitch. Uh, in With exit at 19 water, you can do the cloning glitch in dungeons because uh, exit takes you out of the dungeon. With 24 water, uh, the next spell we get is return, which takes you back to the previous town, which lets us clone spirits on the overworld. Uh, so basically, what cloning does is let us grab the spirit more times than we should be able to. Unfortunately, the JP version, there's, a, there's an animation that happens when you pick up a spirit, so you can only clone up to two times. The US version is much more interesting. Uh, you can clone up to six times. I'm at 16 experience rate. So right now I'm basically setting up to fight the first boss. Oh, this is a good defense training. So the more times I get hit, the faster my defense and HP go up. So I'm going to fight these guys a little bit. 
And unfortunately, this is the boring part of the run because there's a bit of training. Yep. Uh, these guys are called Mario Nasties. Or Mario Nasties, as well. I thought that was weird. Yep. Yeah. One thing to note is about the difference between US and JP is one, the HUD is always there, where on US it will fade away. And something that's really helpful with Japanese is you'll actually glow more when you get a static grade. Yeah, as well as the fact that all the stats go up significantly faster. There's a lot less training you need to pick your stats up. So in the JP runs, we actually kill Salt Ring in about 15 minutes. In the US run, it's about 18 minutes. And that's solely due to having to train because uh, they actually tone down Salt Ring in this game, or in this version. And the US version, Salt Ring is ridiculously strong and can absolutely destroy you. I could actually die here if they crit, but probably won't. That was a poor decision on my part. But whatever. No, no. You crit the slam version? Right? There's no crits in the US version. Okay, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, US version doesn't have any crits. Still only at uh, screen. Alright, this is a bad fight. I saw the Mary Nasty and I saw the frog, and then I know that the stupid kobold would be there as well. Kobolds are an awful enemy. They hit really hard and they have a good bit of HP. They're just dumb enemies. Yeah, they made JP pretty much easier. It was one of the few games that it was released second. The US version is is terrible, <laughs> arguably. It's pretty bad. Uh, Alright, so as the run goes on, I'm going to get basically to about 25 water and stop, and I'm going to max out Earth, because Earth has all the spells that we really, really want. So those spells, uh, at 24 Earth, we get the damage spell, Avalanche, which has an obscene base damage, and also drops a, a, seeming a random amount of rocks around you that can hit enemies uh, a certain amount of times. If we're lucky, we can hit up to uh, about seven times, but that doesn't happen. Uh, 16, now I 16, this is 32. Oh, and JP, you can also melee twice. Yep. It's a bit finicky. Hence me looking like an idiot when I'm mashing. Oh, he crit, but it doesn't matter. And misses. The misses are already starting. This is the vast majority of the run is going to be that. That was bad. Yeah, the spells you have is based on what points you put uh, into different elements. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, misses, you're going to be seeing a lot of those, especially when I get escape. Escape is essentially flea, but it has a 55% chance, technically, of happening, though it feels more like a 10% chance. Uh, so at 48, that's actually the next level. So I'm basically mailing these guys once to just get some free uh, HP training. Plus they have 24 HP, and I don't have quite enough to kill them with one shots. I can do a low roll. Cool, that was good. 48. Oh, in the US version, when you kill bosses, you actually get oh, you get a bonus HP from each boss. In the JP version, you get bonus HP and bonus MP. So thankfully, we don't have to train MP at all in this game, or this version. US version, unfortunately, you have to train. It makes it pretty bad. Right, I'm not going to fight him. He's only one. He's only with five experience. All right, another defense fight that I'll take. So I'll get the 50. I want to get the 59 just because. Uh, the devs didn't hate America. It's an unfinished game. Basically, the JP version, they took the turd they had and polished it some. Think about it, it's one of the few times that the US actually has a harder version of the game. It means we're better, right? Uh, I got too close, he's gonna use his uh, short range attack, which only hits once. Yeah. 
Hm? Das ist doch krass. Ja. That sucks. I don't want Brian to dodge. Because I want to get hit by everything and train. That's a bit easier. So right now I'm just grinding HP and defense. Unfortunately it's a bit tedious. But I don't want to die through Soul Ring, because if I don't do this, I probably will. And even so, there's still a good chance that I die to Soul Ring. I definitely need, and I need a 77 experience, I'm only at 48, so not good right now. The last defense up I wanted. I need 29 experience. So, preferable would be basically uh, a, a six bat fight. And this looks like a multi bat fight, which is not that's a shame. So, I have 58, 58, 52, let's see, 61. Experience. Cool. That fight went about as well as could. Usually I'm missing one. Now I want to get 77, so I need 16. And after this, I don't need to count experience because I basically am just going to clone him from that point on. Oh. I have more agility to him. Surprising. Give me two flowers, they're worth eight experience a piece, so if I get two of them, it's perfect. Unfortunately, I got somewhat unlucky with encounters. Hey, look at that, it's perfect. These guys have um, 65 HP, so I could actually kill the one on the right the next hit. Unlucky. Nope, he has one HP. Yeah, their, their hitbox is bigger than their actual size. So that's weird. So I should have enough, unless I counted wrong, which is always a possibility. So I should have exactly enough, and it might not. So I'm going to do one more quick battle just in case. That's quick. All right, cool. He's basically going to die unless I get super unlucky in this. So I definitely have enough experience now. And now we fight Solvering. And, oh, yeah, uh, drops in this game in the U.S. version. Uh, if you don't have an item, you can get a drop, and there's a 25% chance of the drop after every bottle. In the JP version, there's still a 25% chance, but you can have... Uh, that was a fail. Uh, JP version, there's a 25% chance still, but uh, you can get a drop even if you have two of the items, so you can have it to three. And you just get some MP back. And I'm going to ignore him for a second and go grab this item down here. That's another, uh, that's a honey bread. He'll be for 100. So I have two honey breads and like four fresh breads. So he uses a laser attack. I'm gonna use these boots that make my movement and go pretty up. Dodge that. Move forward. Hopefully he repents. Nope. Did that. Alright, so he has 200 HP. On three. And he's an awful, awful fight. I'll probably miss a bunch. <laughs> Speak of the devil. I got, oh yeah, and he can crit for that much. He can crit for about four. Alright, two, four. I don't think he can kill me. Two, five. And I heal. The reason I'm moving around him is uh, your agility is based on how far you move from the beginning to the end of your combat turn. Five. Exactly. Oh, uh, yeah. It's actually not a bad fight until that. Uh, he can kill me. I'm not going to risk him critting me. He might not have. Alright. 
Uh, something like that. I think it's seven. I, when I was playing earlier, I missed uh, more than I hit him. I actually had to use an MP item, which was a first. All right, I think he has a one hit. Tell me. Classic. Very classic. Right, okay, cool. Now it's all for any. What are you doing? Your mana runs out? You can either use a, a dew drop or a similar MP recovery item, or I think. Ma using your melee actually gives you MP for each time you hit him. And thankfully in JP, you can melee twice. So you can get two MP if you actually hit it both times. All right, so we're about to see the cloning glitch. Not as interesting as US version, but still interesting in that we can make more spirits out of one. And I will probably screw this up because I've had bad luck with this one. Yep, classic. All right, that sucks, but it happens. That one's not been playing nice for me. And just because you can do the cloning glitch, you're still required to collect all the physical spirits in their actual location. You can't skip one because you collect two somewhere else. Or yeah. Like and no, that wasn't the first time that's happened. The JP version of cloning sucks, and sometimes you just don't get it, even if you're good at it. The shame. So, I'm going to try to get the initiative agility glitch here. Hopefully I don't get into encounter first. Alright, so there's a good chance I get into encounter after I walk out of this corner. Try to get it. I might not get- ah, oh, dammit. Alright, I clicked at the same time the fight started, which happens a lot. Not a big deal. If I do get it, if it's a bonus. If I don't, it doesn't matter. Oh, and I got frozen. That sucks. You use this. This make this frees them from moving, but also skips their turn. Normally, I prefer to use that if I got in a bad count encounter on the corner, but it's also okay. Use it like that. Yeah. Well, the the cockatrice. Yeah, those guys are pretty terrible. They're just laggy though. Oh yeah. Uh, and generally, I'm going to try to move the camera away from large groups of enemies, so as to not lag. Especially when it's casting escape, which I'll have soon. Alright, so we're going to make a detour to an area, uh, Glencoe Forest. Uh, there's like six spirits, seven spirits. Uh, one, two, three. Six spirits, um, and we're gonna clone a couple of them just so we have more. Basically, we want to get to about a bit more than 24 Earth before Zels. And plus, this is all spirits, so we have to get them anyway. Uh, bad luck with encounters. Um, the way the encounters work in this game is there's a um, is basically just a percentage of how much of a chance you're going to get encounters. It starts at like 1% and slowly builds up. More often than not though with this game it just decides, eh, it's close enough to 100 encounter, you took two steps, next encounter. So a lot of times uh, I'll complain about two step encounters because it happens quite a bit. Especially, well, in Glencoe Farce it's pretty bad about it, Blue Cave is pretty bad about it too. Or as I call this area, Glen Troll Forest more accurate term for this stupid area. Alright, so basically we're just walking to the spirits and cloning them. And running away from the enemies, right? Unfortunately I don't have uh, escape because I messed up the first clone. Normally I would have 23, which would be enough to cast escape. But I'll clone this first one and put one in water so I have escape. Alright, decent encounters. They're not particularly laggy and they don't do much damage or anything, so nothing scary. So that's what the cloning glitch should look like. <laughs> I got two, and uh, normally I'd put these all into Earth, but because I don't have 23, I want to put one into there. And it's a lot easier to split them up in this version because you have a couple sec, a bit, a bit of time between them. Ah, 
the lag stalkers. Because they're because of their sprite, if you have a couple on them on screen, the game lags a lot. So I'm generally going to turn my camera away from him. You can see how his cast is super slow. Oh, that's much, much faster. Oh, another thing I should point out, uh, encounters in this game, it's always Brian, enemy, Brian, enemy, Brian, enemy. And if there's multiple enemies, it's Brian, enemy one, Brian, enemy two, Brian, enemy three. So, and this is a prime example of why that's bad, if you run into one enemy that does a lot of damage, that's actually worse than running into multiple of that enemy. Because you can get further away between their turns. If it's just one enemy, they go every other turn, oh, bad, just like you do, and uh, they can just stay on you and kill you. That, uh, the Hot Lips, that enemy, that flower that we saw, actually does a crap ton of damage, so he's actually kind of scary. Fire pillar's no joke. Yeah. It'll hit me, I have a lot more HP and defense I usually have. It'll probably hit me for 17 or 18 right now, I think. And uh, this is going to be the story of the game, is Escape Missing. Just the rest of the game. <laughs> Alright, normally I would... Yeah. Normally I would skip this uh, spirit. I, would, I mean, I would grab it, but I wouldn't clone it. But because um, I've messed up my cloning so far, I'm going to have to clone this one. These guys don't like too bad, so I don't need to clean the camera from them. Yo, hey Jazzy. Alright, there we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Uh, power options. Oh no, it's, un it's under control panel, it's under power options. But you just search power options. They're trying to keep the, the computer that has chat up from falling asleep, because it keeps yeah. falling asleep. Every 10 minutes, there we go. Much better. Cool. So now it's not going to go to sleep, and you guys can do chat. There we go. Yeah, at that, that time it's laggy. There's certain areas, no matter what direction you're looking, you're actually going to lag no matter what, and that's one of the spots. Thanks, Jazzy. We'll need that luck. So all spirits entails collecting every single um, overall sprite spirit um, in the game. 98. 98. I must be a wonder if like there's two more just hidden somewhere around. I really hope there isn't. <laughs> They're probably hidden out of bounds somewhere that we can get to, but had we have no reason to. So normally I wouldn't clone this sp spirit either, but because I've messed up so many cloning, or so much cloning, I'm gonna have to. Oh wow, this is really great. That's good. Be helpful for the out of bounds and actually see better. Actually, it looks a lot better in the spirit as well. All right, cool. Nice. So I'll have the the amount I would normally want, which is ten, coming out of here. So I'm gonna grab one more and then clone the next one. <laughs> Dang it, hobo. You would like that. Oh yeah, that person in that hut is just some random witch. Don't remember what the person's name is. Unimportant. Not story relevant. So I wonder if 98 is just an arbitrary number. Like they just decided to put them in place and at the end they were like, oh, we have 98. Yeah, pretty much. I feel, I, and I, again, I, I uh, contributed to the fact that uh, it's an incomplete game. <laughs> so I'm wow. sure there was going to be more, but they basically had to rush the ending of the game. And you'll notice when we get to the last world, where it's like, wow, this looks extremely unfinished. Extremely unfinished. Man, this game does have a story, technically. Not much of one, but it, eh, it's there. It's always been more about the gameplay. Than yep. Alright, there we go. And one last spirit, and we're done with Glencoe Forest. Always nice to fight these kind of enemies. Granted, he's really slow to move, which sucks, but he does have this attack, so we get free HP defense training, which is nice. Never say no to that. I was 73 HP for where you're at right now. 
Uh, I'm ridiculously powerful. <laughs> I was gonna say. Uh, normally we would get to 53 before silvering. I got to 59. So I'm a good six or so experience, six, seven experience more, more than I want to be. All right, so this is an Apophis, Apophis, whatever the heck their name is. Um, I don't know they have the strongest HP item in the game that they can drop this early on. It's, a, it's an HP item that heals you fully. Now, unfortunately, there's no reason to kill it because we are plenty strong in the JP version of the game, but the US version of the game, because of the way the route works, it's actually okay to kill one or two of them because if you get that drop, it's just a super bonus. Uh, Squid would have known the name of that character. Squid would know the name of every character. Alright, so, for those of you who don't know, Squid the Pig is the man who broke this game. He found, I think he found all of the glitches. He found the, uh, the cloning glitch. He found the out of bounds through compression glitch. He also found the one glitch, or the one out of bounds where you actually just walk out of bounds. Which we will be doing. It's by and far the best out of bounds. It's super cool. Just, you go out of bounds. <laughs> it's a Japanese name though. Good question. There's nothing interesting going on right now, just progressing through the world and going as we go. Yep. Yeah, all encounters at this point are time waste. But unfortunately this game is pretty trolly, so we'll probably get into way too many encounters. Classic. Yeah. You'll have days you'll have one day a week where escape works like nine times out of ten, and then every other day escape will miss nine times out of ten. Okay. <laughs> I just call it normal. <laughs> marathon luck would be dying to the bosses. Especially in JP. The JP is significantly safer. You have, you're stronger all around. They actually toned down the bosses a bit, especially Solverang. Uh, they gave Guilty and Mammon a element, which is technically no element. In the US version, they have no element. That, they don't have any kind of like designated element. So I've actually pressed L here because it reduces lag for whatever reason. Um, and, and we would create a save here. Normally, this save here, uh, I don't need to create an actual save use this as a death warp, but we're not going to do that. So I'm just creating a save there now. Uh, what was I saying about uh, some uh, 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 bosses being scarier? Oh, uh, magic variant uh, spell we use that makes you invulnerable to all spells. Not melee, but all spells. Uh, and thankfully all the bosses use only spells, but uh, it lasts two to six turns, and the third turn is like an 80% chance. And the US version, it lasts two to four turns, and the third turn is a 40% chance. So, in the US version, we're generally going to be casting Magic Barrier, Avalanche, Magic Barrier, Avalanche, Magic Barrier, Avalanche, MP item. JP version is Magic Barrier, Avalanche, Avalanche, Magic Barrier, Avalanche, Avalanche. Oh, and the boss is already dead. Because um, they're all weaker and you do more damage. Oh, I was actually talking about how uh, Guilty and Mammon actually have an element, which is no element. So, in the US version, they have literally no element, so they take half damage from spells. In the JP version, they have an element that's called no element, but they actually take full damage from spells, they just don't have a weakness. So they're actually significantly easier. Yeah, you already know it's the, pretty much the same monsters get recycled with slightly different textures. Yeah. Pretty much the rest of the game. So we, we stopped by Laura Pool because we want to grab these blue wings because we after we kill Zelf, we, we run to Dondoran Castle. They grab those two spirits that we that get unlocked, and then we come back here to go into Blue Cave. So we'll make a quick stop to grab the blue wings, which teleport you back to the beginning of the town. Right, 
while I go down and try to get the initiative glitch one more time. So I just got the initial glitch, which basically makes, makes gets me go first. But because I cast a spell quick enough and it's on the open world, I'm pretty sure it's the open world only, my agility just jumped up for no reason. So actually, it looks like I didn't get the agility glitch part, portion of it, unfortunately. So my agility is still lower than my defense, usually it ends up being higher. But the, what happens is for whatever reason, I suddenly get a crap ton of agility training. No idea why. Unfortunately, it looks like I did miss it. It's a shame. Yeah, I did grand defense earlier, but my agility, I, I actually did the same thing when I was practicing earlier, and my agility ended up being like six or so higher. You get a lot of agility. Okay. It's a shame that I, uh, I'm not sure what I messed up. I think uh, when you get it, the initiative glitch, you have to cast a spell immediately. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I need Squid to tell me, the man who breaks the game. He would know. I think you actually might have to hit them with the spell because the only time I've seen it work is when you hit the enemy with the spell. I'm not sure either. All right, so coming up is Call Hazard. Uh, in the US version of the game, we would actually, because of the way cloning works in the US version, we can get six at a maximum. We can actually get to 19 fire early enough to do the out of bounds here, but because of the way JP works, we can't do the cloning. Uh, so the out of bounds works by you get to 19 fire, you get a spell called compression, which does two things. One, it reduces the defensive enemy worthless. Two, it shrinks their physical size, so like their sprite shrinks. And if you stand in a certain spot between them and the wall, basically push them off the wall a little bit and you just stretch there. When they grow back to normal size, you get pushed out of bounds. So it's pretty nice. In this area, it's super easy because wyverns are enormous. There's a couple areas I'm gonna try to do this glitch again. I don't know if it works in the dungeons, uh, whatever. Um, I'm sorry, out of bounds. Uh, so there's three areas that we go out of bounds off of enemies. Uh, we can go out of bounds in a lot of areas, but there's only three areas that's actually worth it. Um, three enemies, the wyvern, the biggest, the easiest, and that's in Call Hazard. Uh, in Blue Cave, and this is only US any percent that you would do this uh, because you had to pick up spirits and all spirits is against the scorpion and its hitbox is super small so there is a very 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 small window that it can push you out of bounds so that one's really tough and then the third one is in uh, boil hole against the uh, magma fish it's it's small-ish but it's not that bad and then of course there's a bergen tunnel out of bounds and the reason we don't go to out of bounds in all of the areas is because when you're out of bounds you can't activate doors you can only activate dungeon uh, entrances or exits that are just big open holes because the hitbox extends out. Uh, the NA version and the EU version, Holy Magic Century, by far the best name of the three, uh, are exactly the same except that the uh, US version, Brian, is named Brian, and the JP and the uh, EU version, he's named John Shacks, I think. I like yeah, uh, US is Quest 64, JP is Ultima Monsters, and uh, EU is Holy Magic Century, which is by and far the best. Oh, he was Brian? Oh, uh, well then, this, when I was told, I was misinformed. Maybe it depends on the language that it's in. All right, so in this area, I'm gonna wanna fight uh, four uh, blood gels because they get a crap ton of experience and I want a couple levels. If I kill two groups of four, I'll get four levels. That's really nice. But I'll settle for three if I have to. So this is just a walk through this dungeon, pick up two spirits, pick up a couple items. So this is the wyvern we would go out of bounds on if this was US, but unfortunately, we can't. <laughs> we 
what you want. <laughs> so that, and that's what she's doing here, she's got a tag. A fun fact, you could dodge a lot of enemies' attacks by moving in a particular pattern. Because of where he, he shoots, he uses Fireball 2 and Fire Pillar. His Fireball 2 attack, because of where it starts, curls down, and if you run straight at him, you actually go under it. And it misses, but if you're too far away like that, you get hit anyway. And that's why I was moving in a particular pattern when I was fighting those enemies that were using uh, uh, Wind Cutter 2, I believe. So that I would get hit by all of them. And at this point, I actually don't want to get hit by anything. It's not a big deal if I do, it just wastes time because I can heal. I forgot that was for one. Yeah. It's, an it's definitely another one that, unless you know it's there, you can forget. Even if you don't look at it, you can forget it. <laughs> Just a silly spirit. Yep. And so begins the time of lots of encounters and a whole lot of nothing in between. I remember playing this game casually as a kid and I just like wanted to get the hell out of that. You just me, you're just like, oh my god. Yeah. When I played this as a kid, I actually only got to call hazard at the furthest I got, and I didn't know that your MP would regain when you were walking around out of combat. So I didn't realize that I could heal, so I would, I would always end up just not healing unless I was in combat, and then dying. Because I end up with not enough HP. Yeah. I got away with the Better than me. Sounds about right. Yeah. You actually, wind is pretty easy. It's not that bad. The worst one's actually fire. Wind is actually not that bad because it has, a, even though it's kind of weak damage wise, it hits a lot. So it ends up balancing out. Fire is kind of weak and it doesn't hit that much. Yes, yeah, Squid the Pig, the man himself, does has a fire route of this, of the. The US version, his any percent run for uh, the fire route, I think it's 208, I believe, is his time. The record at this point is 158, which I hold. It's actually pretty good for nothing but fire. Yeah. yeah. The only reason we grab fire is solely because, uh, well, actually, there's two reasons. One is for compression, which is the thing we use for most of the out of bounds. And the other thing is the way uh, damage works in this game. So obviously you get damage in your spells based on your elements level, but you also get uh, more fake levels from the adjacent and the across elements. So in the case of Earth, I would get bonus damage from fire elements and water elements. In those cases, it's per each eight, I get essentially a bonus level on Earth. In the case of wind, it's every 16. So obviously, once we max earth, we want to max water and fire, and lastly, max wind if we even get to that. I don't think we will. I think we'll end up in the 30s or 40s of fire. I believe my older brother had to beat the game for me. I had to return my game to block one. <laughs> Fair. My older brother and my older cousin actually both had the game. They both beat it. I think the only time I ended up beating it was actually using a game shark and using the clip. <laughs> I basically just ran to the end of the game. Sure. Right, so we grab these two chests. I've gotten, yeah, Rip Quest 64. If someone turned it off, I wouldn't be terribly upset. <laughs> this is a, there's a reason we like to call it RNG 64, because it literally is about the same as rolling a die for two hours. About the, sa about the same outcome. Yeah, it's gonna, all right, so I'm gonna take this fight even though I don't want it. I'll line it up nicely. I just found the game. That was bad. 
for the speed game is kind of Yeah, it's not raw. I'm terrible at this game. I've always been struggling. I have, if there was four, it's actually easier for me to line up. The three is actually a pain. Right. That'll be one level, I believe. Oh, two. Right. So I guess it's it's the second fight. Uh, if I get three, it would only be one level, but if it's four, it would be two levels. But since I got a three first, I'm not going to get that uh, second level. I'm not going to fight this. Need to see what Chad is chatting about. It is a quality uh, they're, they're movie. Sound effects are dead. Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. It's about right. Recording random noises like, ah, hey, it's close enough. It's about the same. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is chat ever good? It's Switch chat. Switch chat sucks. It was actually pretty good for like. How far we're in? Uh, almost 40 minutes. Well, probably closer to 50 minutes because I took extra time. So this, I'll probably call uh, Zelos around the 50 minute to an hour mark. That's part of the game. Coming. Yep. It's a shame we skip it in uh, the US version. The Vine. Uh, didn't someone time this one? It was like exactly 60 seconds long. I have no idea, to be I honest. Can't. Someone did. Kirk, Kirk Q undoubtedly did. Oh yeah, Kirk Q did, I think. Yeah, I just find it funny that there's like this long 60 second no encounter walk through well, a tunnel. Yeah, I mean if you look at this area, it's set up like there would be a boss in the middle. Mm. Just think about it, and the way this is, like you just feel like there's probably supposed to be a boss fight here. And fun fact, yeah that's the end of the game. Fun fact, the Game Boy version of uh, this game, which is kind of a demake, there is a fight there and it's a dragon. <laughs> yeah, it would be really cool if they, I would love to see this game actually fast. Yeah, it's a cool project, maybe. Yep, I agree. Kirk Q is the all-knowing god of this game, and Squid is the all-breaking god of this game. And I'm just the idiot who runs it. Right. Oh, good. Four. That's what I want. There's, so there's three water pillars. The biggest one is that huge one that I was using. They actually all do the same amount of damage. There's literally no difference between them except the hitbox, like uh, Slucky said. All right, so I have enough spirit. I'm, I'm plenty good. There's three in town. Put me at 22, and then there's three more spirits. I'm guaranteed at least 24. That's what I want. I need Avalanche for uh, Zelz. I'm going to clone both of the spirits in Moonward Forest. Alright, and that's the end of Call Hazard. Grab uh, all the spirits and grab a couple extra breads and create a save because Zelz can decide to kill me. I'm pretty bad about it. 
first and grab the. Let's track those boss chains as well, or just put like the. No, stand in a certain you, position? you stand in a certain position. You want his mid range attack where you can run away from him or at him, and it'll miss. So his mid range attack is essentially a laser he shoots out in front of him that goes horizontal. Yeah. That's in right. front of him, and it's really, really, really easy to dodge. His long range, he shoots like a a sh bunch of little like hornet things at you that hit you for a bit of damage, and then his close range is like the the big wind cutter attack that does a bunch of damage as well. I can't remember, I think this one is the bread, and the other one is an MP item, which I'm going to skip real quick, make sure. Yeah, I'm going to skip that other one because it's only an MP item and I really don't need it. Save. Uh, so basically, if I die to Zels, I'm probably going to end up using too much items, so I'll have to reload a save. But nice thing about this game is if you do have a save, you can actually just mash A through the text. You don't have to do anything, and it'll take you back out after saving. I'm used to not having no memory cards here, so I have to hit up once. Let's make this a multiplayer run. So, you know how to clone, right? Uh, kind of? Basically, mash A and the C button right after. Okay. And that's all the cloning is. Just back and forth? Yeah, you want to do A, then the C button, just kind of the same. Just do it. Go for it. Oh, oh you hit B. Uh, hit, I hit the... Yeah, hit A first. So you want to cast a spell and then start mashing. Nice. You put one... Nice. Exactly. That's exactly what cloning is. You got two. Nice. Did I get them both in the? Rock? Yeah, you okay. put them both. The, you put them both in the earth. Awesome. All right. I was worried you're next. Put the wrong one. Right. <laughs> yeah, one is invalid. Set a record here, but the name better be on it. It's a. Uh, it's the. This is the. Uh, uh, three-player one controller run of uh, Quest 64. Oh, Elto Monsters. This is the world record. Oh, fun fact, apparently we're gay, according to chat. Thanks, chat. I didn't know that. <laughs> now I know. It's the facial hair. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, oh. spiders can shoot wind. Seems to be good. <laughs> All right, that's Pops. Uh, he does a lot of damage. Much scarier in the US version, because he could two-shot you. JP, he still does a good bunch of damage, but not that much. Spiders shooting rocks. No idea why. Hey, it pops again. Getting a lot of encounters. Usually you only get two or three encounters on the way to boss. Hey, classic. Escape nice. Alright, he could have crit and killed me, but I don't care. Just want to be basically at full health just in case. Yeah, it, hey, squid. Uh, if we run into monster waifu, uh, well. Not, still not as scary as JP because we're stronger in general, but she still does a crap ton of damage. She uses Wind Cutter 3, shoots like 8 um, wind shots. The only thing that scares me I think is my World of Mammon. Yeah, World of Mammon is scary as crap. Uh, all the enemies do, well, two of the enemies do a metric crap ton of damage, and the other ones do basically nothing. So it's either you're going to die or you'll get a loving caress. Alright, do it, Earth. Earth right? Yep, Earth. Nice, you got two. Awesome. Cool. Make my run easier. Oh, the Lamia. Yeah, yeah Lamia. Yeah. Lamia has that? I think, I think it's us. I think it's Lamia. pronunciation of like <laughs> Honestly, I, I think it's Lamia only because I've heard the name from, uh, from Final Fantasy. Yeah. Oh, you guys are better. You should play. Hey, hey, monster waifu. <laughs> she is. She's. Uh, she's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of damage. Unless you crit every single dime, I'm not gonna die. And I got. Hey, the one-time escape decided to work. PC will never ever get Quest 64 uh, <laughs> emulator. Yeah. True. 
Is All right. there one that can spawn like right here? Like I you can get a fight there. Yeah. Yeah, but, that, yeah, but not anymore. All right, so this is Els. He's the wind guy. The wind jewel. He tells you to go away or I'll kill you. Pretty standard. Yeah. <laughs> Except he's a bitch. All right. All right, so this is Avalanche. As you can see, he dropped rocks around you randomly, and I didn't hit them all. All right, so that's the mid-range attack that we want to see. Try to do the thing. A1. He has 680 HP. Uh, let's do far. The bigger the hitbox the enemy has, the easier it is to hit with Avalanche over and yeah. over. Yeah. All right, so that was bad. That's all. Oh, no, that was great. Yeah. I know I'm, I'm also terrible at judging it, so. Usually once I find a spot, I look at like it's like a dark spot. Yeah. yeah. Two. Two shots. Generally, I just run exactly to where it was. But sometimes you just decide now. Alright, so three. Still not a very good fight. Yeah, see, I was standing in the same spot and he decided to walk up. Bad luck so far. Hey, that's good. Uh, camera, please. Four, five, rather. Right, they're probably gonna hit me. Yep. Don't crit. Cool. And sweet. Oop. And use a mint leaves that gives me 20 MP. Standing in the same spot. Okay, nice miss. Six. Alright. Takes like seven or I think it takes eight or nine rather. Avalanche is being Yeah, Avalanche is being a dick. Which happens a lot. Shame. I feel like it like it's a pain in the ass for a long time. That'll be that one like block. You just get like four drops at the same time. Yeah. Oh, all right, so he's probably oh, yeah, dead. Like that. Yeah, that's what Avalanche you want to look at. All right, he, so he has one more hit, probably. So that's what Avalanche should look like if we're lucky, but, you know, never lucky. Right, so I think he's dead. Yeah, you complain enough until Avalanche is like, fine, you can hit him once. Whoa. Sometimes his... Oh, wow, two misses. Oh, that sucks. All right, just do that again. Okay. All right. Come on, he has like one hit left. That should kill Alright, cool. Alright, so we put two into water, because we want heal two, which in the JP version is a huge jump from heal one. We go from healing like 17 to like 30. Just, Isn't that double? Whatever it, it is. Yeah, pretty much. Alright, cool. Step on that. Alright, so now we make that quick stop into Dondran to get those two spirits. Unfortunately, one is unlocked after you kill Solvering, and the second one is unlocked after you kill Zels. Yeah, next so, next boss starts the the magic barrier spam. Sorry. The question, no, it's fine. The question I have is, uh, there's a move that you can increase the damage you do with your staff, right? Yes. Since you can hit twice in this game, is that like? Uh, better? it's arguably worth it against uh, Guilty, depending on um, how many spirits you have because you could you could do a bit more damage and it's more consistent damage than avalanche but avalanche is always period going to be faster yeah it's just it it, it unfortunately it's it's straight rng so like you can one turn like, enemies like, uh, enemies have smaller hitboxes yeah nepti is terrible in in what i call the new game plus run which isn't actually new game plus it's just max yeah. it, no it's called max it's basically you start with max stats i basically took a game shark save and gave you max everything it's actually faster to do. I don't know, I don't hear it. It's actually faster to melee um, a couple of the bosses because you just do more damage. Mm. Magic barrier plus avalanche truly is like the greatest combo. Though. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. It, it helps that none of the bosses use a melee attack because magic barrier only makes you invincible to magic attacks. And there are enemies in this game that do use melee, but they're fairly few and far between. Could you imagine if Guilty's claw attack was melee attack? Ugh. 
I'm glad it's not his short range one. Short range one would be more likely to be melee since he punches the ground. Yeah. I appreciate it, guys. You try to be entertaining. You are watching uh, Walking RNG Simulator 64. All right, so this is a nice area. There's this water mage here that you're supposed to talk to to put the water down, but instead I can just go in the door and out the door, and hey, look, the water's down. <laughs> Don't have to talk to her at all. This game is built on very older, like older technology, where a lot of the things in this game are literally just cutscene triggers, yeah, or like triggers for different areas and stuff. So like how they program the game is very, very old school. Yep. All right. So at 36, I now have enough uh, earth to cast a magic barrier, but I want to max out earth, so I do a crap ton of damage. Ah, yes. For everyone wondering, we're about to start Blue Cave, the one of the more tedious, probably the most tedious area in the game. Pretty good music though. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's the only redeeming factor about Blue Cave is it has good music. Yeah, it's very good music. There's six spirits I have to pick up here, and I have to branch off to the left immediately to grab the first spirit, which I'll clone, and then uh, move on to the rest of them. Fun fact, uh, in um, the Any% percent runs, you can actually skip Shilf and skip Fargo. Uh, Shilf is, uh, I think she works for Mammon, and uh, Fargo is the guy who has like the fire jewel. Um, you can skip both of them and continue in the game like nothing happened. It literally doesn't matter. The You actually have to fight Zelf, Nephi, and um, Solvering. Like, you absolutely have to fight them to progress along in the game because certain things don't happen unless they uh, are killed and you have the item from them. You could technically not play Guilty or Bogus, but there's, as of yet, no way to get around them. If you could get to the door on the other side of them, you wouldn't have to fight them. Mammon, obviously, is literally at the end of the game, so you can't not fight him. Trigger for the credits. <laughs> yeah. Can someone find a credits warp, please? Squid, need your help. Because I always wonder with, like, loading zones and doors and stuff like mm -hmm. that, if you can use the game and just, like, load it. Yeah. I would be interested if you could. Yeah. Oh, whoops, I see you can heal too. 31 versus, like, 14. <laughs> So much better. You have a lot of HP right now. Yeah, I have a metric butt ton of HP. Like way too much HP, which is good. Means I almost guaranteed won't die. I should not say that because probably I will die now. <clears throat> yeah, so these are the guys that you'd actually go out of bounds on in the US 80% run. As you can see, their hitbox they look very small, and their their AI is really, really bad. Like, sometimes they'll walk up and use their short range attack, sometimes they'll just do their long range attack. Alright, cool. So they're a pain. Usually, you would actually want to do it on this wall, because it's actually a nice flat wall. Makes it really easy. Oh, if you notice, the rest of the walls are kind of crooked and stuff. None of There's not a really nice flat area. You can go out of bounds on the walls, but it's much, much more difficult. Doing it on that flat wall gives you a bit more leeway. Hey, escape. Classic escape. Oh yeah, we tricked you guys. Not actually quest before it's uh, missed 64. <laughs> I'm so glad they put rocks with arrows. Yeah, this this area would be atrocious if uh, you didn't have arrows, especially for the casual player. Maybe the biggest thing for the casual player is you have a compass. You should probably try to use it. Yeah. That's the, the that's the one mistake I made. Yeah, the compass is actually super helpful in this game. Um, you, know, you always know where you're going. But, uh, unrelated, kind of related, to know where you're going, after you win a fight, Brian will actually jump up in the air and face the direction he was facing when the encounter started. So you can actually judge which direction you are moving uh, after a counter ends, or an encounter ends, based on that. But if you escape, it doesn't. That's only if you win the encounter or kill all the enemies. Yeah, the camera is complete ass in this game. And the camera is probably the number one enemy in my opinion. Terrible times. Yo, what's up, drifting? Hey, yo, drifting. What's going on, dude? Almost all the quest runners are in here, we just need Kirkyu to show up and uh, Mecha Chili. I think Mecha Chili was actually the first one to like come into my chat and be like, you doing this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. <laughs> but, uh, I was just like, oh, thank you. Like, I actually know what I'm doing now. <laughs> that always helps. Yeah, I, 
I, uh, I was fighting bosses and I was pretty careful about it. And Kirk Hughes, like, you know, you can be extremely aggressive. Like, you can, uh, especially in the US version, like, you can do, and I think it was Nefty in particular, it's like, Fighter, get down to no MP, use confu or Confusion, which based on the damage you take is how much MP you recover. Um, she won't kill you, especially if you're at a certain health, I think it's 97 in the US version. She won't kill you, she can't two-shot you. So you magic, you go through your MP bar again, and then you use Confusion again, instead of using an item because it's faster and you save an item. So it's just like more aggressive strats, like taking advantage of using Confusion. So I definitely, I, I definitely learned a lot from basically like all the runners, especially Kirk Hugh, the god. Yeah, uh, my original run was based off Kirk Hugh's notes. Yeah, yeah, Kirk Hugh was uh, the pre-glitch god, but he still knows probably more about this game than literally anyone. If anyone were to make a task of the game, it would be him. I remember Golden ran uh, US. Did he? I, don't, I can't remember if he got the record or not. I, know he was I going don't think it. he did, <laughs> to be quite honest. Yeah. I highly doubt it. He pushed the town pretty hard. Yeah, I mean, like, Kirk Hugh exists, so he wouldn't have gotten a record and <laughs> no glitches. Kirk Hugh would just come out of the shadows after like a year of play and be like, hey, look, I beat your time by 15 minutes. What? How is that possible? I was saying the golden time might not have been very good. Oh, his time was awful. I don't know. I remember seeing his time was like in, in the, about three hours. Is not very good. But I, I could be wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. This is a there, so this is one of those areas in a dungeon where you can't get in, encounters. So it's just a lot of walking for no reason. However, because of this, our encounter rate is like at like 90% as soon as we step into an area with encounters, so I can actually somewhat with some accuracy predict uh, an encounter and potentially get the initiative glitch. I'd say about five times out of ten, or about half the time, I would get the glitch. But there's a good chance I'll fuck it up because I'm bad. I think from a game design perspective though, this is actually really cool for a couple of different reasons. One, you get your MP back, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit of a rest area. Yeah. And two, there's so, like almost an aesthetic feel where you're just like walking through the cave, like yeah. you get break from the encounters, like it's kind of nice. Yeah. So I'm all for it. It's a shame that the area is not very interesting. Alright, so this is the encounter area. Ah, dang it, I pressed it as soon as it started, so I missed it. Not a big deal. It just saves a bit of time if I can immediately cast escape instead of having to wait for a turn and potentially have escape fail anyway. Oh, look at that! Escape actually worked once. Not ah, damn. Now yeah, I'm pretty sure all the go towards uh, what is it, space Africa. I thought it, um, I thought maybe it was. Oh, I guess it's space Africa with their space aids. Yeah, I'm trying to save space Africa. Yeah. That was established during the Banjo Tree run. <laughs> Thought someone fell. Alright. Oh, the glory of having heal 2 and JP. Heals for so much. I think uh, when you have max elements, oh, something to talk about. Um, generally, a mistake a lot of people made when they play this game is you have tried to balance your elements. That's actually the worst thing you can do unless you're doing a staff-only run. <laughs> because the way staff works is based on your HP and based on the how many elements you have and how balanced they are. So if I were to have 50 earth and 50 water and like let's say 100 HP, I'd hit pretty hard. But if I had 100 HP with like 30 of all elements, I'd actually probably, I think I'd, I think that's about where it is, where I'd hit harder. Because the, the elements are balanced. I wish this game had, well, anything. <laughs> well, now it has out of bounds and, and a cloning glitch, which is quite interesting. Uh, the US version actually also has a, uh, a win animation glitch. Which, at the end of the battle, when you win, Brian jumps up in the air. There's actually, in the US version, there's a small window where you can start to cast a spell, and if you cast heal, it cancels that jump animation. It's, it's a bit faster. 
but it also, also uh, for whatever reason, it actually skips the audio trigger, so there's no music until you get to the next encounter. It's kind of interesting. Uh, Black Bubble, I agree with. I do think JFG is a very good game, though. I would disagree with you on that one. What game? Yeah, it's just saying Jet Force Gemini is bad. <laughs> oh, well, they just have bad opinions. I mean, it's chat. They're shitters anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember when I was a kid, I was actually hoping that they do, like, a, a Nintendo DS version of this game. And then just add in, like, I, that be the director's cut. Honestly, I hope they just remake this game, or make a game in this style. Because I really, really enjoyed the, the way the magic works in this game. It's super interesting to me. Yeah. And honestly, if someone just took the concept of this game, and use the the encounter style and just made a completely new game, I'd be all for it. Yeah. It doesn't need to have anything like the story, that's fine. The story is as generic as it gets anyway. I wouldn't even care if it only still only had one character, maybe just yeah. a slightly more intriguing combat system or something. Absolutely. And and shops. Because there are no shops, there is no money. Uh, if you run out of uh, breads or or uh, MP items, you can actually go talk to uh, the bar keeper or innkeeper or whatever, and they'll give you one, but only if you don't have any. So this is Blue Maze in the Blue Cave, and there are three spirits here. Uh, in the US version, you can actually freeze the game in this area uh, by casting um, Rock Shower. I was playing earlier, uh, and I tried to crash the game on the JP version, I was unable to do it, so I have a feeling the JP version, they fixed that. Or I'm just extremely lucky, which is not a possibility. But we're basically done Blue Cave, and we're about to fight Nefty, who is uh, Kirky's waifu. Very important fact. Uh, she also has the smallest hitbox of any of the bosses, so she's particularly annoying to fight. Yeah, if you want to see a fire-only run, Squid the Pig has... Squid. on YouTube, or? He has it on YouTube, he probably has it on his Twitch. I actually plan on learning it uh, at some point soon, so that's another thing. I also plan on doing, uh, actually, I played through staff only in JP, and actually wasn't that bad. The restrictions I had were I can't use any offensive magic, but I can use defensive magic. Hmm. So, and buffs for that matter, because without, um, uh, with, stack buffs with, like well, without power staff 2, it's awful. Hmm. Power staff 2 basically makes you do a crap ton of damage for melee. But a lot of the bosses have uh, spells that uh, debuff you, or, or remove any buffs, actually. Not debuff you. They basically cleanse you of any buffs. So I, I have allowed magic barriers so that you can get more than one turn with that, or have it canceled immediately. Where's all our in this game? There's pretty much none. There's some here and there, but this is... this. I wouldn't even call this a cult classic, to be honest. It's like that much. It's a game. Yeah. <laughs> Barely. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of neat art, concept art for this game. It's really sweet, but unfortunately, it's all implement unimplemented. And Charlie. You're right. Yeah, at Hobo, I would highly suggest doing a melee-only um, run of the JP version. It's actually quite a bit of fun. You have to grind a bit more, but it's not like you don't really get trolled because of how much you grind. You're very much, much, much stronger. Yeah, all of uh, Brian's power comes from his cowlick. Yep, that that sweet, sweet cowlick. <laughs> well, it's more like a scythe. Like, look at that. All I have to do is headbutt someone to win. Despite us co constantly shitting on this game, I actually really do like this. It's a super neat concept. It's unfortunately an unfinished game, which makes it tough. The thing for me is, like, I like the basic core mechanics, and that's pretty much all this game is. If yeah. you don't like that, then that's probably why you don't like the game. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, the the first boss solvering does make uh, it pretty hard. So basically you just have to train a bunch for him. And because you have to train a bunch for him, you don't really have to train much defensive-wise like the rest of the game. It's really not that bad. But because of the way staff works, uh, 
Oh, I also allow uh, exit and return so you can clone so you can get more spirits. Because otherwise you have to fight a lot. That's just not fun. But basically, there's just no offensive magic. I think I got, I did it in, I'm gonna say about three hours, three and a half hours, something like that, of staff only run. I was actually kind of surprised that it only took that long. Yeah. And I definitely overtrained. So, like, I think I end up with around 36 of all elements. Solvering in the US version is a huge difficulty. Like, oh my god. He's an asshole. For anyone who plays this as a kid, it's very rare for people to be like, yeah, I got fast Solvering. It's like, what? <laughs> you did? Cheater. Yeah, I rented this game for a week, and the first three days I had it, I spent not fast Solvering. <laughs> yeah. This is Epona, the person who trapped Mammon a thousand years ago. And that's all that matters about this. Oh, and this is the guy who would have been the melee character if they had completed the game. We don't, unfortunately, see the white mage. He's up in her room. Isn't there another kid about Brian's eyes? Yes, that's Leonardo. Um, he, wa he was not supposed to be playable character. He was only supposed to be three. At least as as they far they had planned. He may have been eventually. But he's uh, he's like a wind mage guy that's friendly. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to create a save here. If I died in FD, um, that's bad. <laughs> because... Um, I'll lose, I'll probably lose, I won't lose too many items, this isn't US, but I just don't want to use too much. Alright, so there's a couple spirits to the right, I'm just going to get them afterwards because I have to go that way anyway. It's not a big deal, I'll be at 49. Yeah. Solvering is the true first test of the run, only about 20 minutes in in the US and 15 minutes in the UK. can be. Usually she's not that bad. I, I mean, I don't, the second one to me is guilty. Like, it's, uh, oh, I need to cast this game. I it's, think Nephi is really, honestly, the element check of, like, have you planned out your elements and do you have a good setup? That I definitely agree with. If you haven't set up correctly, she is awful. Alright, so now we're under the ocean. Because why not? And about to see Kirkyu's waifu, and there you go, there's Nefty, and all her glory. Alright, and this is Miss City, the game. Uh, she has the smallest hitbox of like any of the bosses by a significant amount. Zelsa's pretty small, but she's smaller, so she's awful. And unsurprisingly, I don't hit her at all. Oh, there's one, that's good, three, that's nice. That's super lucky. How much health does she have? 400? Uh, she has 880. 800, okay. The so first boss is 200, Zelf is 680, Nepti is 880. Um, after that, Shilf is 1000, Fargo is 1500, um, Guilty is 18, Vigus is 19, and um, Mammon is 2200. I have their, I have their, uh, how much HP there are in my split, so at this point I actually have it memorized. <laughs> Does she, does she have the high, some of the highest invasion? That doesn't surprise me either, to be honest. Alright, that sucked. Right, this is confusion, which missed! <laughs> How completely unsurprising. Alright, so where's the MP? This is 40 HP, so I don't care that much. Ah, uh, I got really lucky, Match Barry went for four turns. Alright, cool. What's the accuracy on. Um... Magic Barry, I've been, oh, Confusion, I don't know. Uh, four hits, I actually don't know that one. I think it's a 70, five, six. Yeah, All right. All right, so that wasn't a terrible fight. It still wasn't particularly good though. All right. Now I'm gonna get to 19 fire so that I can use compression. And that will be in Boil Hole, which is about two bosses out. Sorry, Kirk Hugh, we had to kill your waifu. I mean, she hit me first, so... She deserved to die. I, I so love the fish. Yes, awesome. fish stick. I think that's literally their name is fish stick. Um, oh, so it's, it's definitely one of the best, for sure. Um, normally, we would die here uh, to do the death warp after I pick up the three spirits over here. 
but because I wanted to be safe and create a save, we're actually going to have to lose three minutes to do the walk over to the boat. So, alright, I already have 50. <laughs> I'm trying to put more in Earth. So basically. Here. And there's the water witch lady and the <coughs> pirate. Colleen. Colleen is her name, yeah. Alright, and this is the way back to. We don't have, thankfully, we don't have to walk back to Blue Cave, there's just this teleport to the eating of Lair Pool. So, normally the death, the, the death warp, uh, or death whatever, it basically saves this walk. It can be as fast as a minute and a half or so if we don't get a lot of, or if we get no encounters, or it can be as slow as, you know, however many encounters the game decides to throw at your face. Yeah, this kid is uh, basically Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> this goes forever. Just keeps walking. Until I need to go out of bounds and then I just walk fast. Fun fact, the kid is also 10 years old, <laughs> so we're just going to send a child out to fight all these demons, <laughs> because that's a good decision. I don't know what the trend is with N64 games and really young kids going out to fight evil. Yeah, for sure. Right, so let's see if I can get the initial glitch. <laughs> Quite a few of them. Oh! Oh, I had it! I had it. I hit you too early. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, Legacy of Dark. I think that's a definitely a Castlevania thing though. There's always one character that's super young. Yeah. Alright. The stupidest spirit in the game. Alright, so normally we only have to go through this boat once to get to East Limeland. But because there's a spirit in this boat, we have to go all the way through the three cycles of the boat to get this dumb spirit. So now I'm back in East Dondaran, the first world after, or the first area after Silver Ring. And I have to go back into the boat and back out. Now I'm in West Karma, where I just was, and now I have to go back in the boat and back out, and now I'm East Island again. It's the stupidest spirit. You have to go so out of your way to get it. That's just a pain. A reminder because of old school uh, programming, how those doors are set up. Yeah. You have to go in and out. You can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to go in the door once and go to whichever area I want to. You have to go through the cycle. Literally, there's like, there's, there's a bunch of different copies of those rooms and the outside. Yeah. And they're just linked to different areas. Yeah. It's not like the same one linked back and forth. It's weird. Right. This area begins the area of super slow walking enemies. Just to waste your time. Yeah. It's really the last overworld we're even fight anyone. Well, no, not true. Yeah, actually, I just like the the uh, the uh, Dinjum drives more because the enemies are scarier. They actually do damage. These guys aren't scary; they're just tedious and slow. <laughs> Yo, those, those caterpillars, are super spoopy. Oh yeah, because you always fight like six of them. Oh good, I'm faster than the fish. Fish man, these guys are the worst. They're pretty slow, they cast water pillar and they also, or water, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, good, he didn't cast his attack. Uh, what, what's that? It's a water pillar, it's, um, what's that? Um, water road, like. Walking water, walking that's what water. it's called. Yeah, there yeah, we go. I wasn't going to. No, Hobo just said it. Sorry, Hobo, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and they're lagging. We could technically go out of bounds in this area, but it's essentially a soft lock. Um, it's not because we can, as long as we have water, we can get out, or we have wings, we can get out. But if you don't have uh, 19, uh, 24 water or any wings, it's actually a soft lock because you can't get back in bounds. There's no entrance to a, uh, a cave 
that you can open up. The entrance to um, Baragood Tunnel is a door, and you can't activate doors from Out of Bounds as of yet that we know. Now these are the caterpillars. Usually you fight them in groups of like six. Two, not that bad. Yeah, a lot of the like the metal sword, like, a lot of the spells that the enemies use, they're kind of like the same ones over and over. Oh yeah, they use mostly the same enemies. Bosses all have unique spells. Um, this, all the spells you see from uh, the general enemies that are being cast, I actually can cast as well, but a lot of them are fire, for whatever reason. I think around Baragrun it starts to switch it up a little bit, I think. Uh, eh, there's no, there's less water. Yeah. There's more fire, but there's a lot of fire throughout the game in general, and earth, and wind. Well, yeah, actually no, it's it's mostly fire, I'd say. Just together in a couple weeks, I, I believe it. One of the longest things that probably took this game was the textures. <laughs> yeah, right, this is a nice and laggy area, so I'm gonna try to avoid looking at the center of town to not lag it that much. All right, grab the wings. I'll grab two spirits, use the wings, grab wings again, go grab the rest of the spirits. All right, so this is our spirit down here, but you can actually pick it up from over the wall, which is nice. Saves like four seconds. I always wonder if the interaction with spirits is like vertical, like a column, as long as you're within that column. Yeah, it might be. Like height-wise, I'm not sure. I think it is, it doesn't matter. As long as they're within a certain distance, uh, like an X value, it doesn't matter the Y value. Yeah, because that one's like way below you. But there aren't there aren't that many that you can. Um, yeah, that's what. It so it's hard to t it would be hard to test. Actually, no, it totally does. The Y value totally doesn't matter because there's one that we're gonna pick up from the Bear Goon out of bounds that we can pick up from like a bizarre height. So yeah, it doesn't it actually doesn't okay. matter. It's just as long as you're within an X distance of them, that's you can pick them up. Yeah, they have to be somewhat. They have to be a certain. They have to be like within that circle of radius where you can normally pick them up, close to a wall, for you to be able to pick them up from over the walls or from weird angles. That almost reminds me of Doom and like how you can shoot enemies that are like way up high. Yeah. And, like, shoot right from you. Yeah. Same concept, I guess. Similarly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Two minutes. This is better than OOT. Hobo. That's fired. At least I don't warp to the end of the game. Cheaters. Right, so this is the spirit that we could actually pick up from like a weird angle. It's I mean, you a bit would tough. warp to the end of the game if you could. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> kidding? If I could not have to deal with like Solvering or Zelts or Nepti, I would totally do that. I think a Solvering skip would actually be pretty sweet. I don't think there's any way to do it, unfortunately, until we find like some crazy way to clone more. There's two spirits back here, and I'm totally botching, picking up the second one. Where is that? There it is. I'm looking at it and can't pick it up. Yeah. If you don't know this exists, you'll probably miss this one. Although I feel like it's such a kind of an obvious thing that you would walk up there just to be yeah. like, I wonder why that's there. And like try to read the bookshelf. I think that one's easier than the ship. It, the ship, you, I still agree, it's a hard one to find, but I don't think it's I don't think it's anywhere close to the worst. The ship one is probably the worst because yeah. yeah. you the only way you would find that is by absolute accident. That and the, the desert one. See later. Oh, and I totally. Oh yeah, I'm not paying attention. Yep, wings, and we're out of here. Well, yeah, the first room on the left, once you go up the steps, has a couple chests, and then the rest of the rooms up until the library have nothing but people you can talk to that give you useless information. I have 12 children. Stuff like that. Oh, we broke through the cave. Gee, thanks. I totally care. Right, this is another thing where there's a lot of enemies, so I turn the camera away from them not to lag as much. No, Hobo, I disagree. I think the ship one is the worst. It's not hard to find per se, it's just a stupid spirit. The one in the middle of the desert is the second worst, in my opinion. Because if you miss it, you're probably not going to ever find it. 
especially in a blind playthrough, like, if you're, like, following a guide and telling you, oh, it's around this area in the middle of the desert, like, that does not help you. I remember doing that. It's my very first run. It was, like, five minutes of running a yeah, I remember when I started doing All Spirits, I missed that one. I, it wasted me like three or four minutes because I missed it and just couldn't find it. It's actually a lot easier to find it at night because it's still the same brightness. So if you have trouble finding spirits in the middle of the desert, just go save, make a quick save and make it night. Oh yeah, and Peaches ran this game too. I miss Peaches. Alright, I got nothing more than that. <laughs> Yep, Peach has made good choices in video games to speedrun. Especially this one. Best choice. I have a lot more experience than I normally would. I think. Uh, I think I picked them up in a different order than I usually do. Yeah, no, I have about the same. I think I have like one or two more, maybe. Because usually I get to 19 on this next spirit in fire. No, Peach has come from a tree, now I can. <laughs> Just saying. Yep, quoting the. I'll oh, put that by man. Okay, fair in a factory downtown. <laughs> that is a fantastic song. I love that song. By the President of the United States of America. Oddly patriotic band. Hey, the... hey cool. All right, so there's a, there's an animation uh, skip type thing that you can do uh, if you cast heal and slide into a door. Basically, when once you're done casting heal, instead of doing the, the finishing animation, it just opens the door automatically. It's not really worth anything, it just looks cool. It, do, it, it technically saves time, but in the area of frames. Front swag. I like it. Yeah, pretty much. I, I like I like to do it on the first chest in uh, Solvering's area, in the house where the boots are, because you can cancel the healing animation by opening the chest as well, instead of having to do the, the animation cancel that we do by pressing A or Z which cancels the end of the heal a little bit faster. Side note, these fireball guys in this funnel, I hate them. Oh, they're the scariest enemy. Uh, if you fight one of them, uh, they can basically, they can two-shot you. They do a metric butt-ton of damage, and if they crit, they're even scarier. But if we run into a couple of them, it's a lot safer. If we run into one, uh, I could die. It could happen. Probably won't, but I could. All right, so we're coming up on the the by and far best out of bounds ever. <laughs> Just period. Yeah, what Squid said, it is the hardest out of bounds, but it's also the coolest. And thank you, Base Squid, for finding this out of bounds. I, I love it. So this this allows us to skip shelf, which is fantastic. Yeah. I remember people saying that they would try to build each by if thing. Alright, so I don't want to risk it. I'm pretty sure the second one can't hit me, but I'm not going to risk it anyway, because they usually don't move that far. But, never worth. Alright, so coming up is the best out of bounds. Toughest out of bounds. We're going to do this completely unknown tactic. We're going to walk into a corner, and then we're going to be out of bounds. Hey, look at that. We're out of bounds. That's, agility, that's actually the first time ever that I've gone to the right after that out of bounds. Usually get shot off to the left. That's the first time we've been shot off to the right, so that's never happened before. All right, so I need to see the spirit. There it is. Right. The spirit, you, it's kind of, it's southeast of this area, and you can see it off in the distance. It's just blinking every once in a while. So for those of you who missed it, I'm out of bounds. <laughs> that was really, really, really fast. Alright, so I can grab the spirit that you just saw to the right from Out of Bounds, see if I can get the angle right. Alright, so this is easier just to drop down than... Alright, cool. <laughs> I hate that spirit sometimes, it's a bit finicky. This is where Quest 64 gets weird. <laughs> yeah, for for all spirits, this is when Quest 64 gets weird because we go out of bounds and we walk in space. The, this is also I actually this the one thing that this OB does take away is like this long bridge set segment, which yeah. I actually do like. Yeah, I do like the bridge segment. It's actually quite interesting. Unfortunately, we skip it. Right, so yeah, let's do this. No encounter. Yeah. Stretches. So this 
out of bounds to get back uh, to a nice height, you can actually drop in on certain walls that so puts you at the height of the wall. So I want to hit a certain wall here. All right, so I know where I am. I need to find where I can run east. All right, and turn the camera. So I'm going exactly east, and I'll drop down in about two or three seconds. Maybe more. Not much more, though. There it is. Boom. So that's the nice way so I can see where I'm going now. Pick up this spirit, and then I can run to the end. Unfortunately, I have to come back in and fight Shill because there are two spirits I can't grab from out of bounds. So for those of you who care, there's an area that's going east and then north and then east and then really, really far north and then east again to the end of the area. And I'm just running northeast, ignoring all of it, but I'll run a little bit so we can see it. Hit the, we should hit the last corridor. We'll even stop and say hi to Shill. We'll come back in and beat up in a minute. All right, there it is, that's the corner. All right, I don't want to get too close because the uh, the encounter thing kind of extends out from the areas where you can get encounters. So if I get too close, I can get into encounter, but night, way out in space, there's no encounters, so I can just run around and ignore everything, yeah. So that's one of those spirits I can't pick up from out of bounds, so unfortunately I have to kill Shill. The other one that's up there, I think you can. It's close enough to a wall. So, hey look, there's Shelf. Hi Shelf. We're just gonna ignore you for now. I just wanna throw this out there. I think Quest 64 has made this chat like the best chat we've had at all. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad everyone is enjoying this run. Trying to keep it as entertaining as possible because the rest of the time I could just sit there and do this. And play through the game. <laughs> no one would like that. Alright, so this is a sand desert, and it's going to blind your eyes, and I apologize ahead of time. It sucks. But not ahead of time, more like now. I was going to say, that, wasn't, that was a little delayed. More like now. Um, Alright, so I'm going to create a save here just in case. I shouldn't die to Shilf, but stranger things have happened. Alright, so this is nighttime, makes it a lot easier on your eyes. Especially with the brightness up. Which thankfully was done. Made it a lot easier to see the out of bounds. Oh, shit. <laughs> just put that in the wind. <laughs> it doesn't affect anything at this height. point, but I just feel like an idiot. Two wind height, by the way. <laughs> what were you saying? Sorry. I was just how much higher you Oh, yeah. So, uh, in the US version, we get to maybe 24 MP, and we'll have that in this version before, before Zelf. So, we have more MP in this version after the second boss than we do in the US version by the end of the game. Oh, yeah. So, here's... Ah uh, yeah, she has, all the bosses have unique spells, and thankfully she walks forward to use her laser, because that means I can hit her this turn. Ooh, I thought that was going to hit her. She has a pretty small hitbox too, but she's not that bad. But all the, oh, in the JP version, all the lasers uh, make them actually shift backwards. Kind of interesting. So I kind of want to make her go into a corner. Alright, so it's going to be five and some change. About, uh... 30 HP left over. I don't know if times. Looks like it's not gonna happen. Ooh, okay, two. Yeah, this is not, this is actually a fairly bad fight. Not dangerous, just bad. Really? Dang. I have bad luck. What Hobo said, miss, 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 miss. Story of this game. Three, all right. Ooh, what is this? Wow, this is awful. This is a really bad fight. Yeah, the misses are very real. All right, so I'm going to play safe. Normally I would use confusion. I'm just using the item instead. He should realistically die really shortly, but or wow, this is she couldn't have died like three times over at this point. She only has a thousand HP. 
She has just over 200 at the moment. All right, so one more hit. Oh yeah, swag kill. So now I have to go back into the dungeon and grab some spirits real quick. Jazzy saying SM64 is bad. <laughs> or maybe just commenting on someone saying it's bad. I'd be surprised if Jazzy said that game was bad. I want to try to get an initiative on this one. This one's pretty, very, very consistent. You'll always get a fight in that spot. But I always kind of wrong. So I'll clone this other one just because it's going to make me stronger and I have to pick it up anyway. Alright, cool. Nice. Alright, don't need to make a save. I have to pick up a spirit. I'm way the heck down there. Another silly spirit just kind of put on the overworld. Not terrible, just kind of dumb. Some of them really are, like, very random. Yeah. Ah, were cats. Cat waifu. They got that skinny waist. <laughs> oh, there it is. That's fair. One minute shelf win. <laughs> if only. Completely ignoring my comment, it seems. <laughs> and now we go to. Uh, so I saved over there because I'm gonna death warp back here to do Shamwood, the secret area, for I think 11 spirits. Remind me of the Horde main pad would be a pretty good one. It. I've actually never used a holy main controller. I'll let you try it after. It's, it's spring back. It's ridiculous. Oh goodness. I know that a lot of uh, SM64 runners use it to spin. Yeah, some of the enemies in the this next area, the desert in general, have uh, some newer... Blue man group! No one ever wants to hear the mixtape. Their mixtape sucks. Yeah, a lot of enemies that shoot fire here. I think all of them use fire attacks, except for the, the big rock-headed dude. The rest of them are fire. I actually think MC4 is pretty comfortable. Yeah, I mean, it's only bad if you have to use the, the thumbstick and the D-pad. That's the only time I would say the controller is bad. Is there any games that require not, not that I know of offhand, at least. I'm sure there are, but not like at the same time, but like you, you could use them for different things. It's not that bad, to be quite honest. Like if they moved the deep, if they just got rid of this whole shoulder, or this left side where the L button is, and just moved thumbstick down, it would just be like a normal controller that we use nowadays. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, exactly a Hori, to be honest. Or it would be fine. Alright, so this is a, um, oh god, what's it called? Replica. Uh, basically, it's a guaranteed escape, so I don't have to worry about escape missing. Use it in uh, Mammoth's World where the enemies can two shot us very easily. Is that the only replica in the game? There's no, there's a lot. I, I, I've actually already picked up one, I forgot to comment on it, um, in uh, Donder and Castle. After we go back after Zelf, there's one oh, you pick yeah, up there. There's another one we'll pick up in Shamwood. And there's a fourth there. one in the in the uh, little okay, so uh, like hotel. Like four. I thought there there's was like a two lot. Or three. There's a lot, and there's an enemy that drops them. I think. Oh, okay, okay. I always forget about drops. Yeah, because in the U.S. version you don't get them. <laughs> the only time you'll get a drop in the U.S. version is basically if you're lucky in the first uh, eight minutes or so, and um, the Hellhounds drop a dewdrop. And like that's the extent of drops you'll probably get throughout the run.
All right, so that, that magma fish is the enemy we're gonna, about to go out of bounds on. Not now, in a little bit though. That's the enemy we want. I feel like there's a lot of N64 games that uh, are kind of, I wouldn't even say underrated, just like almost unknown. Yeah, absolutely. Quest 64 kind of fits that category. I'm actually playing a game together, Julian Twist. That oh that yeah, fits that category. absolutely, that one for sure. Just a lot of Yes, you can put a GameCube joystick into an N64 controller, but if I recall correctly, it, it's not good because you lose some uh, movement on one of the directions because the um, the, uh, the, 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 the N64 controller, the little circle in the middle, is actually not center, not a perfect circle. Like, the left side's a little bit shorter than the right side by a little bit. I can't remember how much, but it's, it's enough. Like, if you look at it, you can actually see that it's off a little bit. Yeah, I know, right? I'm thinking of the same thing. I'm just ignoring the cat because they're off hitters anyway. Alright, cool. Got a good fight. There's a difference between overrated and... Overplayed. Yeah, oversaturated, <laughs> I would say. For sure, OOT is oversaturated. But that, I 100% agree with. OOT is still a fantastic game. Can't really argue that. I mean, you can, but you're wrong. Oh, wow, crit. Dick. Oh, don't kill the other one. Alright, good. Alright, so. Now begins the compression misses. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> that was the one. Alright, get hit here, it doesn't matter. He does not have damage right now. Why not? Hey, confusion missed again. Did you like zero confusion now? Yeah, pretty much. Alright. Okay, there we go. Okay, inspiration for tomorrow. What is the inspiration for? I also have questions for a badass 3D open world RPG that would be the inspiration for tomorrow. I mean, if only they said it was. That'd be funny if it actually was. Ah, we'll find out. Be a little safe. I can't. Alright. Alright, I think he's close enough that he can push me out. Yep. Nice. Cool. Out of bounds. Alright. So that's the compression version of the out of bounds. That is the majority of the out of bounds. God, there's a nice little player. Right, so there. Alright, cool. The fog wasn't so bad. I feel like. It's really easy. I mean, you can cast heal, and you can I see just, the yeah, okay. the ground darkens. Like if you need to see it, I know more or less where I need to go, so I don't actually have to do that anyway. I just it helps if you can see it. All right, uh, and a rocky encounter. All right, so this is the worst enemy that you can encounter because he's super slow and he does a metric butt ton of damage if he hits you. By metric butt ton, I mean like that much. And he can actually um, he can kill me if he crits after the first hit. I'm just not. I'm not gonna use any items. I want to hold on to um, the replicas just in case. So there's two strats uh, that you can do to get the second spirit. You can use um, an enemy and go back inbounds the same way I went out of bounds. Pick up the spirit and then go back out of bounds again. Skip Fargo and pick up the spirit. But we're not gonna do that because it is pretty finicky and sometimes you can get trolled pretty heavily. So it's it's just safer to fight Fargo grab the spirit, go back inbounds, and then do the walk back to pick up that last spirit. It's unfortunately safer. I'd really prefer not to do that, but a bit safer. Oh, and this is a nice portion. The map here is uh, uh, basically a west to east map, and it kind of goes like this to the east, so I basically can just run east, and eventually I'll hit a spot where I drop down. So right now it's running in space with nothing going on. Let's rechat. Closing your door is good and so is safe miles to people. I don't really think, like, I don't, like, they are comparable, but I think they're just, like, different games that look good. It's, like, the same thing, like, look at the Prime game, like, Echoes and the first one. Uh, they're all just good in their own way. Yeah, that's true, I agree. I think there's way too much of comparing stuff on the internet. Oh, well, it's, really it's, it's the internet. Of course there is. Everything has to be compared to the Alright, so I should be dropping down a little bit, or get into an encounter in a little Maybe bit. 
I'll, I'll either drop down or I'll get into an encounter before I drop down. It could be, honestly, it could be both. Okay, there's, the, I can see it down there. You can see that's where the boss is. So actually, I'm gonna run a bit this way so I don't get too low. All right, cool, so. That is so weird. Yeah, any flying enemies? Oh, cool, there we go. Any flying enemies just matches your Y um, height and they can actually go through walls. So it looks really bizarre when you fight them out of bounds because it's just like, oh, suddenly enemy out of bounds. It's like, uh, it doesn't expect you to be out of bounds. All right, so I'm too low. I'm gonna have to uh, go up a bit. Clip the wall. Clip the... Oh, that's much higher. I'm gonna grab that. Oops. Uh, if I'm too low, because uh, we're gonna fight Fargo from out of bounds. If I'm too low, uh, he can hit me. But if I'm, this is about the right height where he'll just be. You'll see him, but he won't hit you. And I don't want to get into any more random encounters, so I'm gonna take that a little wide. Yeah, I'm a cheater, guys. I'm sorry. That's what I do. Alright, so I'm gonna grab the spirit because I know about where it is. Maybe. <laughs> Alright, so there's Fargo. Hey, Fargo. We're just gonna, you know, be in space. I'm just gonna throw some stuff at me and I'm gonna ignore him until he gets real close. Come on. He's about close enough. He has 1500 HP, so he'll take about 10 hits. You should be able to see his thing if it hits him. None. Oh, too close. Or not close enough, rather. Oh man, Avalanche is out to play there. there Alright, we go. So he's gonna be 10. Oh, two, three, oh, wow. four. Alright, yeah, somehow he gets intensity hit a lot. It's kind of weird. So he's at a point now where he can't do that all. Time. Yeah, yeah, as long as he uses the short range, he's never gonna hit me. Um, five, I think. And he's always gonna do that attack and eat. I'm just high enough that the hitbox can't hit me. Six, seven. Yeah, this fight, for whatever reason, either goes pretty good or amazingly terrible. Like, there's no one in between. Some bosses you can have bad, you can have good, or you can have amazing. His is, his are amazing or bad. <laughs> there's no one in between. I've never had an okay fight. Really yeah, that was a very good fight. Cool, thank you. <laughs> good job, yeah, thank you, RNG. Based RNG, being nice for once. Alright, so we can run exactly east. Um, a little bit, because I went to a bit tough. And we'll pop up right at the end of the dungeon. And then we'll have to go back in, unfortunately. Alright, cool. There's in the dungeon. Yeah, he definitely got wrecked. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, he got wrecked hardcore. That was a very good fight. Parker got confused at the uh, <laughs> space 10 year old kid stuck on the wall. Why is there a kid flying through the air? <laughs> What's going on? Um, unfortunately, so the reason I like to do the other strat, which isn't as safe, where is I go, I go out of bounds and then I use a, an enemy to come back in bounds and then go back out of bounds again, is so that I don't have to deal with Rockies, because they are the slowest, I think they're the slowest enemy of the game, if not, they're very close to being the slowest enemy of the game, but they also are very, very strong, they do about a third of my HP, and if, if they hit me once and then crit the second time, they can probably kill me. They do close to 90 damage, and I have about that much. So now we just get a nice boring walk to that spirit, we'll clone it, and we'll move on. <laughs> hey, Andy, day. Or however you say that. Andy, words are hard. Ah, oh, Rockies. Speak of the devil. So first Rocky encounter. I've already had one. These guys, and this is exactly why they're terrible. So I'm gonna try and escape. Basically, right. classic. I expect, this is a time when I expect uh, escape to never work. So I'll give it two. All right, cool. So second time, still not good. I should really use a replica against them, but I'm gonna save it because I guarantee I'm gonna get more encounters with those bastards. They are by and far the worst enemy. All right, cool. These guys, not bad. Cool, he just cast silence, which misses nine times out of 10. Hey, Rocky three and four. We're gonna not count the first Rocky that I ran into. Cause that wasn't, it wasn't part of this walk, the slow part. Ooh. All right, so, yeah. And that's why they're scary. Yeah, 69. Nice. Very nice. All right. All 
Hey! Oh my god, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is ridiculous, fuck this game. Um... I really, I really want to hold on to most of my my replicas. Thankfully, if you're real close to him, because of the way the rock spell works, and I think he uses rock two or three. I think he uses rock three. And how big that is! It it starts above him and it kind of goes over you, <laughs> which is nice. I'm sure the designers of this game were super close to them, and they said, "Hey, let's put Rocky towards the end here." Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Well, once we get into uh, East Limeland, we start getting all of the slow enemies, like ridiculously slow enemies. Also true. I, I got silenced that time, so I couldn't cast escape. Yeah, it's the first time you like to see it, but there are stats in this game. Yeah, silence, freeze. You've actually seen. I think I've been oh, frozen yeah. before. Um, I think it's pretty much good, actually. <laughs> oh, and there's defense down, and then there's like agility down. But God, I don't even know what enemies use those. No, uh, the, I do know. There is uh, a ghost that uses defense down. And I think the Marrows, the little girls in West Karma that use Ice Knife, also use an Agility Down thing. I just remember the Knights. But they use Agility Ups on themselves. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm just staying at full health just because I don't really need to, but if I get bad rocket fights, that's for the best if I do. I feel as if I'm about to get trolled. I mean, you're watching Quest 64, so by default, you are being trolled. You're watching this game. You are trolled the moment you put the cart into your N64. Exactly. There's a reason I like the New Game Plus category, because I basically, the rest of the time, any of the normal categories, the game is just doing this to you, constantly. In the New Game Plus category, I'm reaching over and snapping their middle finger and giving it right back. Because you, you, you have max stats and all your uh, elements and stuff, so you can literally just walk up to bosses and use any spell and kill them in like two hits. It's you great. Can you can. It's not, not nearly as much. It's pretty, pretty, pretty small. Because in New Game Plus, you can have 500 HP, 500 MP, 255 agility, and 255 defense, and as well as 50 of all elements. <laughs> ah crap, now I'm gonna get terrible RNG now. <laughs> uh, I can't do that yet, I haven't picked up all the spirits. Oh yeah, that would be bad. Alright, cool. Alright, so, so we're done with Boil Hole finally. And now we do a big bit of collection of a bunch of spirits. We also have some of the game. Yeah, coming up, this, I like this music quite a bit. Yeah, this one. This is very good. Um, the castle music is very good. Shamwood's music is very good. A lot of the best music is right at the end of the game. My music, favorite music is actually the battle music. I really, really enjoy that. Yeah. It reminds me of Final, of better Final Fantasy games. So, <laughs> I, I like it's, it. It's definitely good enough so that way it's not, not annoying. Super, it's not super irritating. It's more likely you'll just tune it out than anything else. Yeah. So I pick up specific chests because the other ones, that one has an amulet that I don't need and I don't remember what the other one up here has, but it's something I don't want. Silver amulet? That's that one. I don't remember what this one is. It might be a flute. Actually, I think this one's a flute. Now that I remember. So I think Squid picked it up when he did a run the other day. So we got three more spirits that we're going to clone, and then we're going to take a death warp back to the desert, and we're going to go through the secret area, Shamwood, and pick up close to some of the last spirits. After we go through Shamwood, I think there's only three spirits left in the game. All right, so the reason I run along this right wall is for whatever reason, you don't get into encounters. A couple seconds later in the game. Yeah, and they're, they're mostly at the end in Mammoth's World. There's two here, run right before the castle, this one, and then Mammon's World. I don't think, I don't, none that we've either found or know about. Oh, shit. <laughs> Cast, uh, exit instead of return. Wrong spell. Oh well, it doesn't matter if I clone these or not, uh, at all. Huh? No. So basically I'm gonna cast return and, uh, uh clone the last one. And, um... Return takes the last one. 
best town you're in. And I, because I reached this town uh, after I death warp, I'm gonna go Shamwood and then clone the last spirit using return and I'll take me back here. Hit. Actually, I'm not gonna clone the spirit. Doesn't really matter. I'm just yeah. gonna pick it up and get to an encounter a little bit faster. Hopefully. All right, there we go. Yeah, I'm gonna use agility ups. And then... Yeah, well, both of them actually use agility ups. The white, the white knights and the red knights, the red rose knights. <laughs> Kidding me? This is where you go. <laughs> All the misses that I wanted earlier, or will want later, I'm getting now. And that rip and peace game. All right, run's done. No, not really. All right, having a memory card in actually makes that a bit slower. Yeah, probably the reason why the uh, marathon started late is the marathon issues. Start, or why it's behind is because it started late. Yeah, internet issues they had. So. I always feel like that rock game, that rock one could do more damage. I'm glad it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, same. To be quite honest. Because you can't avoid it. You can actually. If you're on these hills, if you move uh, your wi your wide distance a bit, uh, for whatever reason it misses. It's it's like it's solely based, or it's based on your Y. It doesn't, your axe doesn't matter, it's all about your Y height. If you move just enough, it is, it's really bizarre. Even though the animation stays with you, the hitbox like stays at the initial casting spot. Middle of the desert spirit hype, by the oh, way. Oh yeah, this is arguably the worst spirit that I'm about to, that I'm coming up on in a little bit, which I'll probably run through a bunch of encounters on the way to. Alright, so I want to set this angle up. And it should be about that. Uh, Alright, that should be good. Alright, now I'm going to try to just run exactly straight, no matter what, even if it um, doesn't end the battle earlier. I just want to keep this angle up. I think it's a little... there you go. There you go, that's better. Alright, and I should run either into it or right by it, and I'll see it. And basically, uh, basically, uh, again, I'm holding B to keep the camera behind me makes it a bit easier to hold this angle. And I just, when the battle starts, I hold B and let the camera get behind me before I start moving. Waste a little bit of time just so I can uh, have the angle nice. It should be over this next hill, I believe. Ah, eh, nope, encounter. I'll have to wait. Actually, I'm gonna run away from this. It's hit kind of hard. It can hit hard. Should be right about down there. Yep, there it is. Oh, thank God. Yep. No, oh, and look, encounter. Nice, even better. <laughs> right next to it too. <laughs> They're all standing around it. Oh, you want the spirit, do you? Got the play display. Now nah, I'll run away. Base escape actually working. All right, and then we'll see Shamwood. Oh, just saw it just before the battle started. A little tiny thing up in the sky. You would have made the game so better because there was an item that I could do. Oh my god. In, uh, in the Game Boy version, there actually is, I believe. <laughs> in the Game Boy version, there's a lottery in Lime Room um, that can, you can unlock a couple of items. There's a cape, which doubles your defense. There's a staff, which I think doubles your magic damage or your melee damage. There's another item, I don't remember what it is, that does something like that. And then there's the badge, which uh, reduces encounter rate. But for the for the Game Boy speed run, you only want the cape because you don't want to grind your defense. You get to what you want, and then you just double it for free. But you have to luck out and win the lottery, which thankfully, like, there's, oh shit, there's a, um, like, you have to take a certain amount of steps before the lottery goes through. But you can get to the point where the, uh, like, right before the bird appears that gives you the lottery. Where the hell am I? Before the lottery appears, and you can just save and then take one step and have the lottery, and the RNG resets every time. So you can you just keep resetting until you get the cape, which makes it nice instead of having to take the five minute. I think it's like five minutes or something. Wait, right. this is a spirit probably no one knew about or found because it's off. All right, and everyone gets to relax with this nice, nice chill music. I'll be quiet for it. I'm really having to relax most of the run. I mean, it's not that uh, difficult, but especially relaxed. This music's quite nice. Chamberwood in general is kind of like that cool place that you find that just has like so much stuff in it. For you guys in here.
another cool thing, like I was talking about earlier, about like a lot of the tunnels that don't have encounters and stuff, the entire Shamwood area does not have encounters. Yeah, it's a, it's a hidden town or castle or whatever, I believe is what they call it. Hidden city. Granted, it's kind of small for a city, but they call it the hidden city. Well, I guess the towns are pretty small. So. But at the top, there's a guy named Lavar who was exiled. I don't remember the reasoning. It's been really long since I've... And he got exiled? Oh, okay, I, I, it's been so long since I've read his text, I don't remember what he, why he was exiled. I assumed it was something to do with the Elton book, but I wasn't sure. I can't read Japanese. Yeah, also true. Yeah, in the Game Boy version, he's actually, he like the beginning of the game starts with him stealing it. All right, so I think this is a deep drop. I don't need to pick this a lot. Or no, that's an amulet, uh, I think. One of these is an amulet, I don't remember what it is. I'm just gonna pick up everything anyway, because I don't remember what they are. I can never remember which ones. I'm pretty sure it lasts with the flute, so I'm gonna ignore that one. I don't care about flutes. I definitely picked up an unnecessary amulet, I just don't remember. I think it's the second one. So the, this particular path, the doors I go out and the way I walk is just the fastest way to grab these spirits. What is that? So there's four spirits in here, and Lavar, who looks really fucking majestic. Let's just take a second to stare at this guy. He looks pretty sweet. He's got a super cool looking staff. All right, enough of him. Wish you could get that staff. That'd be pretty sweet. I wish he was like a secret boss. That would be baller. Just imagine like you can fight him as like an extra boss thing. All right, so done with Shamwood, and I fucked the cloning up. All right, so some of the best music in the game throughout the rest of the game, pretty much. This is uh, probably my favorite right here. Yeah, this is definitely top three tracks for sure. Right, just click save. Oh. Keep forgetting I don't need to move. I just crossed my arms because I really don't know what to do with my feet or that, or just like sit here like this. You can always just dance. <laughs> yeah, I know, that was pretty funny. I've never got the Zodiac screw now. <laughs> That's <a bad> <laughs> And Charlie, we're not sharing it with you. Alright, so I run along this left wall because there's encounters. And there's that big menacing door in the front that we probably should go in. Looks like a nice entrance. I'm just going to keep running along this left wall so I don't get into encounters though for now. You know what? I don't really like the front door. So, fuck that door. I'm going to go in the back door instead. Unfortunately, there's one more spirit I have to grab up here, too. I have to run all the way around to get. Last spirit? No. Three spirits left. This is the third one. There's two more after this one. I assume I've gotten everything. I don't really keep close track, to be honest, because there's really none that are terribly out of the way besides the one I complain about. All the ones that are usually, like, that's the one. Yeah. Cool. No, my God! This this runs invalidated. He missed a spirit. You cheater. Yeah, that was, those two spirits will be found up behind. Yeah. All right. So in the back door we go. And some of the other better best music in the game, also very quality. Epic build up to the end. Also true. You don't get to hear the really good part of the song because so many encounters. Oh, 
based in. I kind of like the flutes in the very beginning. Yeah, uh, it's all around. That song's really, really good. But that was based encounter taking its time to let us hear that part of the song. Yeah. <laughs> Being nice for once. It's like, all right. Well, I guess. I guess you can listen to the music for once, for more than five seconds. <laughs> I'm not going to pick up this chest, because I think it's just the mint leaves. I don't know. Whatever it is, I don't need it. Oh, what am I doing? Forgot to cast escape. Doodle. Oh, they use defense up, not agility up. They still use it up. Alright, so this is another, the second to last spirit. And the last one is in, uh, with that kid, right? Yeah, with Leonardo. That's the last spirit. After, uh, Guilty. I feel like Leonardo, he looks like he was supposed to be like, like a... He's, a... he's an important character in the Game Boy version of the game. You actually fight him, and then he realizes that you're a good guy, and then he sides with you, pretty much. He was, he was tricked by... Because he, he's from uh, Brana Castle. He realized that he was tricked, sent out to kill you, because they knew you, who you were, or something. Yeah. He just, for whatever reason, looks like he would be... Oh, he's, he's like definitely an important character. character. Like, he'd be part of the uh, rock or something like that. Yeah, for sure. You can definitely tell because a lot of the, the characters look like they could have been part of your party. They look special. They look special, and then like every other one looks generic as fuck. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Just gotta make sure you got that equity defense. buttons. Yeah, true. Notice heal too. Right now is hitting for about sixty. The US version, it'd probably be just now getting to about 30. The heal the US version of heal sucks. I think with max spirits it, it's like 60. With max spirits in this one you can actually get about 120. <laughs> which is insane. Alright, so guilty, the second run killer. We're, we'll be fine. He's not scary at all. Not at all. Alright, cool. That's the important thing. He has two attacks. He has a short range attack. This one can kill us in one and basically one. He does like one and a half. Uh, or like 0.75 or HP with that. Alright, so he has um, 1800 HP, so it should be nine hits. He's a pretty big hitbox. Yeah, he has a pretty hit, big hitbox. He's not a bad two, three. Alright, so Magic Beer again. Ah, he's moving. I'm not setting up quite nicely. I want to be right at the edge of that. These rocks do like... Four, I think. Oh, that's a really lost count. <laughs> Five, alright. Oh, that's not good. Alright. So, oh, he actually does half my HP because of how strong I am. So I'm just going to use one of those because I want him to use that attack in particular. Oh, even better, it missed. That was lucky. Alright, let's see. Uh, six. Alright, cool. At least hit him once. Seven. Eight. A little bit more. I'll just go for it. Why not? Pretty average, though. Based. Bad decisions. They all went the wrong way. Bad decisions. Is that JPEG? Uh, Alright, use your long range. Don't walk. Ah, you dick. Oh, okay, cool. So use his long range. That does, like, next to no damage, so we want him to use that. Much safer if we don't have barrier. Can you imagine that with melee? Oh, that would suck. That wouldn't be that bad, because we usually want to be close enough to him right now. Alright, so swag kill time. Not really good. Oh shit. <laughs> not, not swag kill. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> Alright, so he definitely doesn't have that much health left, I think. I'm just gonna kill him with that To be safe anyway. Yeah, he's dead. Ah. I did do quite, if I had hit the first time with um, the staff, I would have killed him. So I left him with not much HP. If you noticed there, when Brian ended the fight, he turned towards the door we need to go to, because that's the direction I started, when, or I was facing when I started the encounter. 
I do it all the time. And I like, wait, 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 south. Right. right. It's even worse when you go through the door and not realize that you're in the wrong hallway. Yeah. Heal. Alright, I'm gonna ignore. There's two items, one on the left, one on the right, that are both uh, one's an HP, one's an MP. I don't need those because I basically have been using nothing, so I have a lot. Again, basically. Notice how I have 73 MP? That's so nice. I think I think I'll have 81 after um after Bygus. Or Bogus as we like to call him. Alright, so this is the last spirit after the encounter. Um I feel like guilty after Bogus. Or other way around. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. It's tough, because Bogus is still kind of a BS fight. Alright, last spirit. We got them all, hooray. Alright, and this is uh, Leonardo, who looks ridiculously awesome. Got a sweet cape. Alright, make a save there, just in case. Yes, at Epona, uh, about three, two or three rooms before um, Mammon. It's the, his room is the room before the last encounter room that exists in the game. No, so it's his, it's that it's Epona's room, encounter room, and then you talk to Shannon. And, okay, so we do this whole sorry, so we do this whole quest to come find our father and get the Elltale book, and we find our father right there on the ground and we leave him. Hi, Dad. Bye, Dad. Sucks to suck. Oh yeah, surprise that character that you're supposed to talk a lot in all the hotels. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that girl in the purple with the white hair, her name is Shannon. Turns out she's a puppet, like literally a puppet, and she works specifically for Mammon to basically guide you to allow Mammon to escape his uh, prison. Basically by bringing, basically, by bringing um, the four jewels, the elemental jewels, as well as the, um, the Alto book to him. And this is Bygis, who actually he says uh, he realizes that he's been tricked into doing this, but he doesn't care, he's gonna kill you anyway. That's that's what he says, Dio. Like, I, I know I've been used, but I'm gonna kill you anyway. Alright, gee, thank you. Uh, Alright, one, two. Hit him twice. Alright, he has, uh, oh, that sucks. That really sucks. Pretty bad luck. Yeah, thankfully you can't two-shot me. Crit. Alright, so... Four, five, six. Dang, this is a good fight. Um, he has 1900, so he takes 10 minutes. Eight, or uh, seven, rather. Eight, <laughs> preempting it. I'm really glad all the bosses had their own, like, attack. Spells. Yeah, it makes the game much more interesting if they didn't. If they didn't, it would suck. Yeah. Okay, so two more, he's dead. Nine. Alright, alright. Swag kill, I think. Oh, no! Don't crit me. Worth. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> I thought for a second. I considered it. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's stop that. <laughs> go for it now. Yeah, now I'm gonna go for it. I'm liking this brutal beat down. All right, there we go. <laughs> Alright, so he was only at like 8 hits, so I was one off when I was counting. I thought he had one more hit. He probably got lost somewhere in that massive. Oh, absolutely. I think I got lost the first turn. I thought he got hit three times, but he only got hit twice. It happens. I think this is the only part of the game with no music? Yes. There's no music right here. 
We talk to Shannon. Shannon gives us the L-Tail book and says, go get him. Or no, she gives, yeah, she gives us an L-Tail book here. And then uh, later on, she gives us the key to Maimon's prison. So that's Shannon. And why is she on our side now? She's not. She still works for Mammon. She's just she's getting you to go to him, basically expecting you to die to Mammon oh, okay. so that he can escape. But it turns out that, that Brian's baller and straight up shits on Mammon's face. So welcome to the world of Mammon. Yep. The unfinished world of Mammon looks unfinished. Although it has a nice eerie feel. The music certainly helps. Yeah, if you've never seen this before, basically the world of Mammon kind of like backtracks you through And this area will repeat in a slightly different uh, shade of colors. So now we get to relax for a little bit because there's only a couple areas with uh, encounters that we hopefully don't get into encounters. Yeah, QTSs, please. No, there's nothing yes. interesting going on, so I apologize, guys. Blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. It's about five minutes of walking through random areas. This is an area with no encounters. Hey, look. All right, bye. This is an area where I can get into encounters, but hopefully I won't. So I'll, I'll hug the wall. I don't think it actually affects... Oh, all right, so, Pinhead. Oh, God. One of the two scary enemies. He can absolutely two-shot me. If he crits on all three, he could kill me. Uh, thankfully, he didn't. We missed even one. So, he's one of the two enemies. And the, yeah, and the other one is My Little Pony, who can't kill you because she only it only uses one uh, of the uh, wide attack that Zels used for his. Actually, Zels is the only enemy or the only boss that has a generic attack. I forgot about that. He uses that one wind cutter thing. Oh yeah, yeah. He's the only boss. All right, so more of these guys, dicks. Yeah, they do a lot of damage. No, I have one more. I think you have four or five. Either way, not a big deal. almost said it was a dangerous area. Yeah. I hug this wall. I don't think it actually affects encounters, but it feels like it does. All right, this is one of the two enemies. Oh, no, never mind. I lied. The other enemy, the Judgment, actually isn't scary at all. And I'm actually going to... Okay, I can get out anyway. Do they use the rock shower? They use rock, two, or rock shower, but they hit, like, for 40 damage. They're super weak. Rock shower is kind of a joke. Yeah. Spriggan is my personal favorite enemy. He either punches you for like 20 damage, <laughs> and he's this big buff blue guy. Looks oh, it looks really like intimidating. Yeah, it looks really intimidating. Punches you for like two damage, or he silences you. And more often than not, he casts silence. <laughs> so he's like, he looks intimidating, but he's a joke. It's pretty funny. All right, so rock shower for, hey look, 30 damage, joke. All right, so whatever, not full HP, I don't care. Good enough. So this is an area with encounters that we run along the left wall to not get into encounters. Because for whatever reason, you're not likely to get into encounters when you're on the left wall. Although I can still totally get into an encounter right here. That's the spot. Usually you don't, but that's the spot where if you're going to get an encounter, it's there. Got one right there. Eh, I'm not worried about This guy yeah, can't kill me. So I'm, I'm going to hold on to my... Um, Game, please. All right, cool. Yeah, I think pinheads, it's kind of like earlier. It goes back to earlier. They're more dangerous by themselves. Oh, yeah, pinheads are super spoopy. Multiple enemies is pretty safe. Especially with a dozen. Yeah, and you definitely see some repeated indoor areas. Hey, look, it's this area again with slightly different colors. Yeah, this is... Rather they were true. they were thinking ah finish it and ship it we're done <laughs> yeah they released it early to uh, so they didn't have to compete with Ocarina of Time for those of you who don't know <laughs> no enemies there's no items there's nothing in these two long like hallways yeah, like, they're or, they're literally worthless it's literally just you walk through it it's free agility training that's all it is agility training and the scenic long route uh yeah with a slightly different it's color it's a cool area it's just you know useless 
Yep. Yo, Hobo, that would be terrible if that happened. I would also be upset at you and blame you. It's all your fault. No three hit crits. That would be some BS. I've never seen any enemy crit more than twice anyway. That would be insane if a pinhead decided, hey, now's a good time for you to not play this game anymore. After all the RNG beginning, though, that'd be pretty fitting. Yeah. <laughs> it would be unfortunate. I don't think they could kill me. I think it would do about 190. You have really high HP, yeah. Alright, so I'm in the last area. Or last, there's like three more rooms and I'm done. Alright, that's Epona again. Guy who trapped Mammon originally a thousand years ago, but now you have to do it again. But this time, you don't trap him. You destroy him. Yeah, I think if they crit, um, it would only do about between 180 and 190, because they're only doing about 60, and I have way more HP than I normally would. So I, w I don't think I would die. I think this is the last real scary This is, This is the last room with encounters, and I'll probably get into an encounter, or not. I'll take it. I can still get into an encounter in this corner. All right, cool. I'm basically home free. All right, no more encounters until Mammon. All right, so we talk, talk to Shannon one more time. She gives us a key to Mammon's uh, dungeon cage, and then we fight Mammon. I thought for sure you would have to fight her there. Yeah, I thought I did too the first time I saw that area. It's like, that looks like a nice big encounter area. But no, here's a key, bye. All right, so. Mammon's such a nice guy, he's gonna let us walk all the way up to yeah. before he starts to fight. And there's Mammon. <laughs> he's a pretty huge enemy, so. Time uh, ends when he blows up, which will be very shortly because he's a joke in this version. So, like we were mentioning earlier about Avalanche hitboxes, uh, Mammoth's hitbox is rather Wait. massive. Yeah, he only has two, 2,300 HP, and we're gonna hit him a bunch. One, two, three, looks like probably four. He has three attacks, two of them are okay, and one of them lags, firewall. Uh, yeah, I one shot him on New Game Plus. I hit him 10 times. I didn't think it was possible, but apparently you do it. That's lag wall. <laughs> he has, um, oh. Hey, there's a spirit bomb. Yeah, so I'm at 8. He only has, he has like 12 or 13 hits before he dies. Alright, that's like 12. Is that, that dead time? 227, that's pretty good. My my PB is uh, 211.09, so only nine minutes is pretty good. Especially with all, like, all the extra chests. Yeah, extra chests and uh, the RNG. I think I actually probably lost most of the time in the first two areas, because I spent more time training before solvering, and yeah. then the Zell's fight was pretty crap. The rest of it actually wasn't that bad. I think that's where you lose most, your most time, is before solvering. Yeah, for sure. I spent way too much time training in general. There's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, in the JP version, there's